If you want the most incredible mushrooms that feel like you're chewing on a car tire wrapped in velvet, get some dried mushrooms and rehydrate them. The sheer excitement I have for mushrooms is unmatched. Seriously, I actually love the flavor of mushrooms, but the texture can just kick rocks. I keep trying them though. I really want to like them. This soup is incredibly delicious and simple. Believe it or not, this whole thing could be done in like 15 minutes. It really depends on having your broth ready to go. So the beginning of this recipe that starts out with water, gambu, and the infusion of mushrooms is the creation of a broth called dashi. It's typically made with these pretty thin fish flakes in place of the mushrooms, but we're plant-based. Plus, if you're into chewable stress balls for your teeth, you could pop the mushrooms in your mouth a little later. You could store this broth in the refrigerator or freezer, and it could be a lower sodium alternative while packing a healthy dose of essential minerals. To create the actual soup in the video, we're using carrots and tofu, but you could really have some fun with this and add things like broccoli, bok choy, noodles, potatoes. At the end of all your cooking, you're adding in your red miso, which is pretty much the star of the whole thing. Miso paste is created through a fermentation process, which is aged for like a year, longer even sometimes. Therefore, it has a lot of good gut bacteria. When I was younger, hearing good and bacteria in the same sentence was like, if you toss your miso paste into the pot when it's boiling, you're gonna add that good flavor, but you're gonna kill off the bacteria, which is not a good thing. So, you know, don't go killing off your bacteria. I had stopped eating breakfast at one point, and I know what you're thinking. You didn't feel like eating. Nah, you weren't hungry. No, that's not it. You had to be intermittent fasting. Well, not on purpose. When I think about it, it's like I had lost the desire to eat breakfast. I didn't really see the purpose. I saw breakfast more as a hindrance. It would take time to prep. It would take energy just thinking about what I want and then moseying around the kitchen to go ahead and put it together. But also, I felt like it caused fatigue. After eating, I was full. Life was like in slow motion. That's my slow motion sign.
left hand moving towards the camera. I just wanted to go back to bed. I realized once I hit lunch, I was having the same problem anyway. Not only that, I was popping daily multivitamins like kids do Skittles on Halloween. Once I started taking my breakfast, dumping it into a canister and eviscerating it, AKA a smoothie, things started working out better. I think the difference was I wasn't dumping my breakfast sandwich into the blender. Instead, I was eating whole foods, fruits, veggies, nuts, nothing processed. And one of the biggest things I've learned while learning and looking into the blue zone cultures is that everything they eat is whole foods and predominantly plant-based. Not to say they don't step out of their comfort zone every once in a while, pun completely intended. So all of the recipes we're looking at today are from Okinawa, Japan. With adjustments I found in some way could benefit the recipe. I'm feeling like I probably should have started with that. This smoothie has a lot of anti-inflammatory benefits as well as immune boosting properties. If you have ever had golden milk, it's very similar, but in smoothie form. As far as swaps, I would really only swap the milk if you're allergic or don't eat soy or looking for a better absorption of the nutrients. Coconut milk is high in fat and can help play the role of helping you better absorb the good stuff. Oh, and for my people who may not know what Halloween is, it's an American holiday where kids and adults can go out at night wearing costumes to hide their identity while impersonating whoever they want and take candy from complete strangers. I'm sure we've done some weirder stuff. You know how blueberries are a superfood, right? When looking into recipes about this particular blue zone, these purple sweet potatoes kept coming up. Hopefully you've seen them before. If not, I'll flash it on screen here. But these sweet potatoes contain one of the very same antioxidants as blueberries. On the downside, these sweet potatoes are like hidden gems and you could only find them in certain markets. I figured out a workaround. Cabbage is like way more accessible and the purple one or 
red one if you call it that, have the very same antioxidants as the blueberries and the potatoes. Plus, it is so much easier to eat raw than an actual potato. Try eating a potato like an apple before, and I feel like my teeth are still having trouble forgiving me. With this meal, we're adding another cold recipe into the index. Between those hot moments in the spring and the summer, cold recipes are like oxygen. This meal though was made to focus on helping us with getting enough fiber while utilizing the strengths of that purple stuff. We can have a whole video on how crucial fiber is to the diet. And soba noodles are typically made with buckwheat, which are high in fiber, and so are the veggies. Salads are extremely versatile, so I won't really go into swaps there. But as for the dressing, there are some options. If you're soy free, you can swap that soy sauce for like coconut aminos. The agave, it could be swapped with like maple syrup, but I prefer to avoid the maple flavoring in this one, if I can. And the olive oil could be swapped with like avocado oil, which is another good anti-inflammatory option. You could find all of these recipes linked in the description or at my website, makeitdairyfree.com. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I truly appreciate each and every one of you watching. Till next time, believe in good. That was a long week. I'm just gonna lay right here.